protesting. You're still muted. I'm sorry. I am wearing a blue t-shirt. Yes. Oh, that's fun. Um, uh, you are wearing eyeliner, which is um, unusual for you. It might be <laughs> of uh, JD Vance. Ah, I actually. Well, now we now have a question about what JD Vance is up to. I actually got lash extensions because I'm going on vacation next week. When I go on a beach vacation, I like to get lash extensions so that I look like I'm alive on the beach without wearing makeup. Uh, So as uh, I don't think we talked about this on the podcast, but um, during our cousin's wedding, Uh I tried on lashes multiple times. You did. Yeah. Yes. Uh And they were very uncomfortable. Like the entire time I was like, there is something in my eye. Well, we didn't, first of all, we didn't put it on properly. Okay. Okay. Secondly, that was just a strip lash. These are lash extensions where they take individual clusters of lashes and they Uh bond it to each one of your lashes. It's, that's why I couldn't record at three o'clock earlier because I was uh, taking a, I was doing this for two and a half hours. So, yeah. So they like, they glue it on. Uh Uh-huh. That's wild, man. Being a person who cares for beauty is a wild ride okay Mm -hmm. all Um, you do is just like huh yeah today was i i took a shower today oh you also look very nice your hair looks good it's exclusive (laughs) for those of you who support us on the patreon thank you so much um we have a lot i think people know this is a piece oh my god imagine no it just me who has the pieces anyway um we have so much to cover so much has happened so much controversy for dumb things um we went honestly in the last three to four weeks we've gone from dread to oh Uh to i would even say hey like that's i think (laughs) the the like (laughs) transition of how i've been feeling like oh to hmm to hey Hey. (laughs) right that's probably right yeah like uh like in the middle you're like hey i didn't i didn't think that this feeling was still there it's interesting to see that yeah i don't know what this feeling is it feels like something foreign but also nostalgic yeah it's something that's real so we've been talking about this sorry go ahead yeah no, I was going to say, because I think that one of the things that I just sort of started coming to in my mind was, well, I'm a grown up now. So part of being a grown up mm-hmm. is just being miserable all the time. So this is just what it's like to be a grown up. You're just, it's a dread constantly. You don't have a joie de vivre anymore. You don't have, Ooh. you don't Paris have. Olympics rubbing <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> I took French in high school for four years. Um. But you know you don't you don't have excitement for life. You're just always stressed out. So I thought that that's what this was, but it's weird to be in a situation where you feel like, am I not screaming to the wall? Is somebody listening to me? Mm-hmm. Now you think that this is a reflection of just being an adult. I don't. I think it's because we have gone through. Um, uh, all of us as uh, a country and as a world and as a as planet, a people. as a people, as a as a species, have gone through an extremely traumatic time in the last uh, eight to nine years that lines up with um, you know certain political movements coming into the picture. Why are you um, Why are you pussyfooting around the words? Just say the words. <laughs> certain political no, movements. Is. Let's just say it's, it. it's it's a Tea well, Party MAGA Trumpers. Come on. It is a team. It is a Tea Party MAGA Trumpers. But then that's also been reflected overseas. Right. Like, so yeah. it started here, but then it's also over there. And so you're like, fuck, man, I can't get away from this anywhere. Right. Yeah. And then we just figured that this is just the world. This is just the way the world works, especially when it comes to politics and stuff like that. Um, but uh, I don't live in dread, but that's just because I'm just high and stoned all the time. So I really don't feel anything. Um, but I also just, I think that I feel, you know, things are cyclical. I think things are bad, but then they're also good. It's mostly good. We just think about the bad stuff because it's in front of us. Um, having said that, the hey feeling that you're getting right now, doesn't it feel 
mini. I'm not going to say it's the same because 2008 was different. Doesn't it feel mini 2008 to you? You know, a lot of people are saying that. I sound like Trump. Uh (laughs) Lots of people are saying, I don't know. (gasps) Lots of people are saying, hey. Anyway, um, I think, so a lot of people are saying that. I think for me, it doesn't feel like 2008 because I just am such a different person and I have such a different worldview of things. I think that like, I can, it's parts of it. Yes. I would say like a fraction of that feeling. It feels like, that's when I say when it feels like some sort of nostalgia, that's what I think it's like going back to is like the youth of being excited for Mm -hmm. an election. And I think we got some of that, like in November, 2020, when like we, no matter where you were, what town you were living in, you opened your windows and you literally heard people stop celebrating. That was really exciting. Right. Like, that kind of stuff. Like I've, I'm not going to lie. I like a little bitch ass got <laughs> emotional the day uh, <laughs> that Biden was inaugurated in 2021. Um, the, in November, 2020, when that happened and we were all excited, that felt more like, Hey, you know, the allies won the war or something like that. Like, <laughs> it wasn't like a celebration. It was more just like, Hey, we're alive. We're going to be alive. <laughs> yeah maybe that's correct but like yeah. for me i think um like january the day that i got my covid vaccine was the same day mm-hmm. that biden was inaugurated i was sitting waiting for like you know they they would the first dose they would give it to you and mm-hmm. then you'd have to wait for like whatever 30 minutes until they made sure that you like didn't convulse or whatever i was sitting in my car watching the inauguration crying <laughs> anyway, i think you're just i didn't cry um i was exhausted whatever yeah because yeah. you all know, don't have tears so anyway um <clears throat> let's talk about our journey here though let's talk about the journey here because last week we were like we'll leave the vp stuff for next week mm-hmm. we didn't even talk about the vp stuff we were just talking about we just got over the fact that like yeah harris isn't everybody's favorite but Mm-hmm. You know, I think that the, she might be a person who listens. And the thing we were talking about was there's a lot of people out there who are like, the Democrats don't care about us. They're not going to listen. And then so from last week, the three big names or four names were really Mark Kelly, local West mm-hmm. Orange, New Jersey guy, but, yeah. you know, senator of Ari- in Arizona. Uh, Can and, I tell you and- something embarrassing about him and your husband? This is just a quick aside. Yeah. Your husband didn't know that he was a twin. I mean, why would somebody know that? He's a famously a twin. They were like big twins. You don't, you don't know that either. I mean, once I knew, like, I think it was just one of those things where I wouldn't be shocked if somebody was like, "Do you know Mark Kelly's a twin?" I would never go, "Oh my god, wow, I didn't know that." Like, it's just like, okay, it's like saying like, if I told somebody, "Hey, I have two brothers," nobody would be like, oh, "Wow, you do!" Like, it's just, it's just a piece of information. What does that right, have fine. to do? I stand corrected. How dare you shame my husband? How dare you shame my husband? I was, tra- I was, tra- podcast? I was trying to embarrass your brother because I, I my your brother? brother, your husband. <laughs> <laughs> You're my brother. Yeah. Now, what if I said my husband was my brother? That would be shocking. That would be shocking. And yeah, shameful. but his mm-hmm. he has a twin brother. Okay, so did Jamie Lannister. What about it? <laughs> They're famously twins, though. Also like- famous twins, <laughs> Jamie and Cersei Lannister. <laughs> You're acting like they're the Olsen twins. They're they they're the Olsen <laughs> twins of space travel. <laughs> you're you're short circuiting. Did they they're go the, in space together? No. So that's how they got. Well, they're, you're I'm so, sorry. You're I'm so sorry. sorry. I, I'm sorry that the Kellys have been disrespected by somebody that lives in the town that they called home once, but like ten years ago because they're both astronauts. One of them stayed up in space for a year and the other one was home. And then when the one came back down from space, they had like this entire study about how space changes your body. And it's the first time that they could do it because it had two identical twins that they could compare and contrast. That's why I thought it was famous. Okay. Well, isn't there a way to also do that by doing a baseline of what a person's body looks like? And then just would they go out to space and you come back and you see how their body has changed? You don't need yeah, a twin for that. You do see that. But then if you want to see how aging works exactly with two people, that's how you do it. Okay. Well, 
All right. Anyways, I can't believe I took us down this path. Sorry. (laughs) Anyway, so he was maybe a VP pick. Then we had Andy Mm Bashir, governor of Mm -hmm. the great state of Kentucky. Seems like a lovely guy and kind of hot. Kind of hot. Also kind of boring, though. A little boring feeling in like press conferences and stuff. But um, I like him. I like him because I liked him because, you know, it was a real um, uh, hillbilly guy versus real hillbilly guy. You know what I mean? Uh It was nice to see that. Um, And I have friends who live out in Kentucky. And one of my friend's husband actually used to party with Andy Bashir when they were in high school together. So, yeah, he was like, it would have been exciting to be like, I used to party with the vice president. A little underage drinking with the vice president, you know? Of course, yeah. Yeah. And then we had um, Josh Shapiro. Yes. um, The governor of Pennsylvania. Yes. And then we had Tim Walz, the governor of Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people were like, I think Bashir and Kelly were out in the first round, it seemed like. Yeah, pretty much. They were like done, right? Mm -hmm. And then so it was Shapiro or Walz. And people were nervous because Shapiro is like he's he's not just that he's like super pro-Israel he's like super pro-Israel anti-ceasefire like he's like very heavily backed by APAC and it was it was complicated to talk about it because he is also a Jewish man like he is also a Jewish man who has a connection to the state of Israel in a way that we might not necessarily agree with because of the acts that Israel carries out, but also a way that we won't ever understand because we're not Jewish. Um, So there's a lot of people who are really worried about it because he's also, you know, called um, college protesters, the KKK. Like he, it's not, it's not like he is just pro Israel. He's just very passionately against the pro Palestine movement. Right. So, Uh, people were really nervous and a lot of, you know, the Harris naysayers were like, see, this is what's going to happen. She's going to get him. And all of these people who think that, you know, the uncommitted thing was working and all that stuff, it'll be egg on your face. Well, guess what, fellas? It's egg Mm -hmm. on your face because it was Tim Walls instead. And let me tell you the joy I've been feeling. I, I feel two ways about it. Yeah. Look at you doing a little happy dance. I Here's the thing. about it. Wait, can I just say something real quick? As before a, you, yes. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, before no, you ahead. say something, I, I'm just saying, as the unapologetically pro straight white male person on this podcast, this is exciting times. How can you not? That's who I'm thinking of when I when I talk. When about you think of good white people, white. yeah, you're yeah. thinking about that guy. You're that's thinking about who him I run and, into like, in my travels, like him and like Jim Gaffigan. Like that's what you're yeah. thinking about, right? I know, I get it. Of course, he's so sweet. He's got the face <laughs> of a cherub. Like it's just so cute. Anyway, here's the thing: very exciting times. But as a woman, can I just say? And also as a person who like watched every <laughs> single episode of Veep multiple times, mm-hmm. do you think somewhere in the back, Kamala Harris is like? Do they like him more than me? Like, I wonder. (laughs) Yeah, I think that's natural. I think when you see the excitement, of course, right? Like, I'm sure she thinks this is why I could never run for president, because I would always be worried that they would like the vice president more than me. And then I'd be like, you know what? Screw all of you guys. Yeah. And spoiler alert, they probably do. Um, (laughs) (laughs) But I think I think it's natural. For people to, I'm sure that people are going to make that claim, right? So, like, when there were, like, uh, clips and stuff of his rally with her going out and mm-hmm. we were sharing it with people, people were like, oh, can he be Can he be on, uh, on the top of the ticket, right? Which is just, of course, you know that it's misogyny and I'm sure it's stuff that women have to deal with all the time. Yeah. I hope that you take, um, you know, you take solace in the fact that it's because, like, when it comes to judging men and women people just look at things differently right like kamala harris is on top is she is the nominee because she's the one that's most qualified for it Mm -hmm. and she should be the nominee right it's just sometimes it's just for people it's just you know they just look at a personality they're like oh that's like looks like a fun guy i want to hang well here's the thing the thing is that women in charge are never quite viewed as fun 
that's the thing. And and you know mm-hmm. what that thing is? It's called misogyny. Like you're like, you know, sometimes people just, you're like, there is the misogyny part of it. But there's also this other thing where it's just like people feel that way. Yeah, they feel like misogynist. I, I am. I am admitting 100 percent it is rooted in misogyny. Yeah. Right. Yeah. At the same time, if you had to pick one person to hang out with for, let's say, like half an hour. Do you feel like you would have an, I think, I don't even think it's better. I think it's just like an easier time. That's what people are looking at, right? Like I would want to talk to Kamala Harris because like she has, she's been in charge of so much like important shit and she's going to be such a consequential person in the world, right? I want to know about that stuff. But that's also like a deeper and more involved conversation. Whereas fucking, I can just hang out with Tim Waltz and talk, by the way, he's wearing a Bruce Springsteen t-shirt in one of those video clips. Oh my God. Very exciting. Very and he exciting. also mentioned Bruce. He also, you know, when he was talking about Josh Shapiro at the rally, he said the one person that you want to go see a Bruce Springsteen show with in Jersey is Josh Shapiro. So, listen, I know Josh Shapiro <laughs> idea. He did call protesters Josh, KKK, but he does. He did call. <laughs> he does like Bruce. So if I can, if I can look the other way with Chris Christie because of that, you know, what is Jewish Obama? Yeah. <laughs> He's totally Jewish Obama. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, the thing with Tim, the other thing about uh, Tim Walls, the reason why right now he seems like the type of person that you could like hang with is because he also like doesn't have the hardened, like uh, he's not jaded and like he's not been through the ringer likely the way that Kamala Harris has, right? As a woman, she's not, he's never had to go through that much scrutiny. Um, I also think you love him also as because i feel like the vice president is like the second son yeah it's a good time they're good, He's time. A good they're time. time they're fun you know who's like really remember biden president? remember when exactly. biden was vice president Eight years of biden amazing we were so we loved him he was so goofy he was so fun he was just With around aviator making jokes. glasses and to be honest kamala during her vp years the last three years a hoot she's so funny have you seen her swearing people in she mocks their voices it's so good she's totally veep like it's just i think that like when you're a vice president you're like this is fucking cool i don't have to do anything unless this person dies i think i'd be a great vice president you would be an excellent vice president i think that you're you were made to be vice president no no real responsibility you do not want to trust me with any of the real shit Right? Yeah, and I have the I qualifications just, to be president, but nobody would vote for me because I, I, am... I would tell people not to vote for you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. As your vice president. <laughs> <laughs> really, guys, I'm stuck to the ticket, but I really don't have a choice. But if it was up to me, I'm just saying you should have all the information. Now, Tim Wall seems like a great guy. And I think that from the pro-Palestine side of things, there's a lot of people who are actually really happy. There's people who are working in the uncommitted movement, which is uh, based out of Michigan. We've mentioned them before. And they're the people that got uncommitted on ballots during the primaries. They really wanted to get like a, a number placed to the people, the number of votes that Biden would risk losing if he didn't change his stance on Palestine. And so that really was a big driver for everything that happened with Biden stepping down that they've been credited. Tim Tim Walls has actually spoken out about the uncommitted movement to say that these are people who are hoping to feel heard and that is their right to feel heard. They have a passion Mm -hmm. and um, uh, they, they are citizens who want to feel heard because they, they have not felt heard. Right. Um, And so the uncommitted movement has even said there are people who are going to be out there that are going to be like very cynical and like, oh, whatever, like you think this is it. Like they don't want you to celebrate mm-hmm. it, but even yeah. they are like, this is the thing to celebrate. We did not want Shapiro as the VP. We got Tim Walls instead, who, yeah, sure. Has he gotten money from APAC also? Yes. But like he is across the board, the most progressive pick that we could have ever gotten besides like, bernie sanders which like we weren't gonna get so like um it's a it's a great time and also he's so funny he's hilarious the couch joke the couch joke is so good but like anytime you know they're like what's fun about the internet right now is like the rnc keeps pulling up clips to try to make it seem like these people are like monsters but Mm -hmm. every single thing they post about them is so good they're like he paid for school lunches. Like, okay. Yeah. So, you know, they call him uh, Tampon Tim. And you know Hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Because he wanted to make tampons accessible. 
Exactly. And okay. so that's the thing, right? It's it's <laughs> like you hear so like I say the word tampon, right? Mm-hmm. When I say the word tampon, I, you see my face, I have like a little bit of a reaction to it, right? And it's the Repu- Republicans want to pretend like it's because as a man, you're not supposed to even mention the word tampon. Acknowledge that they exist. And but the reason why even I have a reaction to it, it's not because I'm a man. It's because I'm a boy. Like that's boy <laughs> shit. Like it's because I'm immature. And they think that that's something that, you know, they should label somebody as as a negative. It's crazy. It's hilarious. They really try every time and every single thing they say about these people. I'm like, that sounds great. They're like, you know, I don't know Trump was on Fox and Friends or whatever, one of those morning shows. And he was like, this ticket, this ticket is the fastest way that the United States will go communist, socialist. Mm-hmm. And I was like, great. Where do I sign? None of this yeah. is bad. Like, I don't, you know, and so I'm just, uh, I'm I'm excited for them. I'm happy. Mm-hmm. I'm not full of dread anymore. And I think the big takeaway is like, we can keep pushing for the thing that we want. And I do think that we do still need to hear about their stance on Israel. And also Tim Waltz is a ceasefire uh, Democrat, which is huge, right? We want mm-hmm. that. Um, he's an IVF dad. And, oh, you know, I read this thing and I really liked it and it kind of made me emotional and I may, I might get emotional right now talking about it. Okay. So he was talking about how, you know, it's great that you have a VP who is anti IVF, anti children, Mm -hmm. anti child free families, anti cat going up against a man with cats. (laughs) And he's actually quoted to say, this is not the part that's going to make me emotional. He said, he quoted to say, these guys are weird. They're going up against cats. Do you know? Have you looked at the internet? Do you know what <laughs> happens when you go get against cat people? They're gonna kill you. Like it's <laughs> he's so funny. Anyway, he talks about um, IVF because his he and his wife tried to have Gwen, who apparently makes amazing baked goods. Like, c- come on, guys! <laughs> I bet she makes a killer lemon bar. You love Ooh. a lemon bar. She's also a vegetarian. Um, oh if we're talking about his daughter, no, we're talking about his, his daughter, wife. Or his wife. What? Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Have you seen that clip of them at a cor- at a festival? And he's like, "We're gonna get corn dogs." And his daughter's like, "I'm a vegetarian." And he goes, "Okay, yeah. turkey then." <laughs> That's the one where he's wearing a Bruce shirt. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyway, so he talks about he and his wife Gwen tried to have babies for eight years. They were not able to conceive, and so they went through IVF, and they named their daughter Hope because. IVF gave them hope, right? Which is lovely. And I started to think about this, you know, this com- this conversation we started where about where I feel like, hey, hey. And like that feeling. <clears throat> I think that anybody who feels like lately the way things have been, it feels like if you say that you're hopeful, that somebody will look at you like you are ignorant. Like it almost feels sometimes like being hopeful is viewed like you're a fool like how could you be hopeful what is there to hope for and i mean Mm -hmm. i think you are protected from that because you're not on the internet but like the rest of us who are chronically online the the discourse is dread right the discourse does not want you to be hopeful i know that's oh that's why you're not that's the reason why you shouldn't be on social media. well i can't not be on social media i have a semi-successful podcast that you happen to be on at the moment right so yeah true it feels like you're not allowed to be hopeful but you know i actually don't wear it anymore because it recently broke but you remember that bracelet i wore all the time that says choose hope have you noticed that bracelet Mm -hmm. i wear So I wear that bracelet. It's like a little words project bracelet. I've been wearing it since 2018. And I started wearing it because a cancer mom that I had met, their daughter Edie died under the age of one um, or like just, just under the age of two of leukemia. And we became really close with their family. And after she died, they were selling these bracelets and it said, choose hope. And I started wearing it then. And it was right Mm -hmm. after our treatment finished. And at that point with Aiden, every at that point, what started to happen is every single family that we had met from NYU or during our cancer journey, all of the kids were either relapsing or dying. And so it became really, really dark and sad because we were like just about a year out. 
And that's usually like the highest chance of relapse. That's the the period of time when you're going to possibly relapse, right? And it was really hard. There were really, really hard days. So it was like, I all I felt like I could do was like hold my breath. And it was really nice to always wear this little reminder that like I have two choices. I have an option to hold my breath constantly and constantly have anxiety and always be filled with dread and just, you know, cut any joy out of my life or I can choose to be hopeful because what's the worst that comes from being hopeful? You get a little disappointed. What you expect to happen doesn't happen. And then what? And then you move on and you figure out a different way, right? But if you're constantly assuming the worst and you don't give yourself any moment to just like take a breath and have hope, it just becomes a really dark, sad time. And so when he talked about his child and how he named her Hope, it just like made me really emotional. I was like, that's nice. And that's the feeling that I've been having lately. And I don't think that I don't want to feel stupid. I don't think I am stupid for being hopeful. I think that that's a normal human reaction. And I think that if you feel hopeful, you should. Yes. Um, You're being a little bit of a jerk about this. You're smirking (laughs) at me as if I'm saying something stupid. And you know what? It's not nice. Absolutely not. I am. I am. I'm not uh, as smirking at you as if you're saying something stupid. I'm saying you I'm besmirked smir- me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am smirking because you know, I I I don't feel the constant dread. Like I feel, you know, when I look at the politics and everything. What I what I feel mostly is disappointment. Like mm-hmm. I feel disappointment that like I feel disappointment that we're having conversations that are so fucking stupid. Like I'm disappointed in the fact that like we have to deal with like hardcore racism that was fucking defeated in the fifties and the sixties mm-hmm. coming back around. Mm-hmm. I'm disappointed that fucking like all these people that talk about being pro America and the greatest generation, World War II, and all this other stuff, right? They're the same people that are like pro Nazis now. Yeah. And that shit is disappointing only because of how stupid it is. Yeah. And like, I can't believe that a nation that is as blessed as America is, and America is a blessed nation when you think about like the resources that are available, yeah, sure. here, right? There's a reason why we're here, it's because life is easier here and better yeah. here than everywhere else right and to see that get pissed away you know obviously there's going to be fringe people on the fringes regardless of wherever you are right but to see that come into like focus and be like the main driving force for people it's really really disappointing at the end of the day it's embarrassing at the end of the day right yeah but throughout all that i'm always hopeful that's the reason why like i'm you know not usually down in the dread and it's funny, I don't know if you made this connection or not, but back to like 2008, right? What, what did that poster say for Yeah, me? it was a hope. It was, that it was said hope, Obama. Right? Yeah, yeah. And it was a great poster or whatever, but that feeling, that feeling of nostalgia that you feel right now, that's what it was even then. Obama wasn't president then. He was still, on, he was still a candidate. He was just out on the campaign. But what the, the nice thing about that campaign was just the hope that we got from it right yeah um and so i'm feeling a lot of that right now you know just to tie back into that it's not exactly 2008 but you know spoiler alert my favorite time of being alive as a person Mm -hmm. are the two weeks of the olympics in 2008 like those Mm -hmm. two weeks in august because it was those olympics were incredible the opening ceremony so many storylines michael phelps usain bolt the usa basketball team all that stuff right but then also it was it happened right at the same time as the Obama stuff was happening over here. Mm-hmm. So right now, just kind of getting that feeling again while the Olympics are on, it's just nice. It's really nice. It is nice. And it's hopeful. And it's just, hey, you know what? Right now my mindset is, okay, remember this feeling. Because the next two to three months, there are gonna be times that they're gonna suck. There are gonna be yeah. times where like, you know, you're gonna especially if you're an online person, you're gonna mm-hmm. see shit like you know, get amplified and 
you know, wrong stories out there and people are going to make you feel like, oh, look at this new poll. Oh, no, Trump is coming back and all this other stuff. My thing is, don't think about that stuff. Hold on to the hope that you have. Your job is just to, you know, keep ticking along and just get to November and then just vote. And then all you can do is just vote and you just wait for the results. And then whatever happens afterwards happens afterwards. You hope for the best. Even if it doesn't go our way, even then, okay, it didn't go our way. It sucks. This is terrible. I can't believe that this is happening. Well, life still has hey. to go on. You got to figure out a way to keep moving. Life forward. still has to. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. Um, Trump tweeted yesterday. Well, he truth socialed. He truth. Of course. <laughs> okay. The post is so funny to me because he is now turning. Um, this into fanfic he said what are the chances that crooked joe biden the worst president in the history of the united states whose sto- mm-hmm. whose presidency was unconstitutionally stolen from him by Kamam- kamabla barack hussein obama crazy nancy pelosi shifty andy schiff crying chuck K- schumer and others on the lunatic left crashes the Democrat na- Democratic National Convention and tries to take back the nomination, beginning with challenging me to another debate. He feels that he made a historically tragic mistake by handing over the U.S. presidency, a coup to the people in the world who he hates most, and now he wants it back. Now. Okay, so what he is saying is that Joe regrets what he's done. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um but also that during the DNC, he's going to crash the G. First of all, what do you mean you're, he's going to crash the DNC? I'm I'm hoping it's uh like off of uh like he parachutes in. Oh, you don't yeah. you don't know this reference, but in um in like the early '90s, there was a really famous boxing match, uh-huh. and somebody named uh, I believe Fan Man or something like that. There's a guy <laughs> with a giant fan strapped to his back, crash the ring. So if listen, if Joe Biden does that. Then we have something to talk about. Well, if Joe Biden does that, I'm going to say, Joe, what happened? Where was this Where was this during the debate? Yeah, where was this three weeks ago? Um, <laughs> um, but, you know. And then again, wait, but the, the best part of it is that he's going to crash the DNC and he's going to try to take back the nomination. But his very first act of trying to take back the nomination is going to be debating Trump. Like, yep. Donald. And, and so this is a problem when you just see like the two sides of the thing. You say, well, I hear that it's almost 50 50 and that it's either going to be, uh, you know, Kamala Harris or it's going to be Donald Trump. Right. Yeah. And then you say, well, if it's Donald Trump, you know, what what does this person believe? And this person believes in fucking crazy conspiracy theories about Joe Biden crashing the DNC. Right. He's like making it up or whatever. So you look at that and you go, fuck, I'm filled with dread again because this asshole could be president or whatever, right? Then you also say, well, if the if these are the deaths that he has to resort to to stay in the news, then that's you know, that's all you need to get out of it. It's just the fact that, well, he's obviously floundering. He's obviously very, very scared. So yeah. if anything, that should fill you with hope because he's seeing, you know, what the numbers are and he's seeing that he's losing so he's going to try to just generate stuff this way his followers are going to try to you know try to generate this stuff the fucking twitter or x or whatever the hell is called under elon musk is going to give you the worst possible news it's going to make you think that it is very very close i personally don't think it's going to be that close i think i'm optimistic or whatever i'm hopeful um i think that the democrats should win fairly easily i i always think that i think there's more people that are quote unquote good not to say that republicans can't be good but republicans that are voting for trump not so good yeah um so you can't look at you can't get too tied up in the social media part of it because the one thing is like the the donald trump does have a pretty good foothold on social media when it comes to amplifying his nonsense like yeah when it comes to like saying just some bullshit and then trying to get his supporters to believe it and to just keep repeating it regardless of how nonsensical it is and then they just believe it and then they honestly just say, like i almost want to be like donald if you just go on tiktok and make videos you'll go viral you make millions of dollars every day just do, just do that just do that just let that go just be that let well, that be your thing well the the sad part is 
you know, when Donald Trump got into this race back in 2015, that was his goal. His goal was just to make money off of running for yeah. president. There's no way that he thought that he would find himself in this position. He never thought that he was a serious contender. It is a failure of us as a country that he became yes. a president. It, yeah. it speaks more to uh, about us. Um, but yeah, I think I think he'd sign up for that, um, you know, pretty quickly because all he cares about is him, is himself and the money that he makes. Like, yeah, and ultimately, when Trump became president, he was able to make a, a ton more money. His family was able to make a ton more money because of all the positions that he had. So it's the first thing that he's been successful at in making money. Like it's because he got elected president and he can and he gets to like sell his tchotchkes to like his stupid fans or whatever. That's the only way that he's been successful. He couldn't run a fucking casino. He lost uh, money running a casino. So, yeah. Um, Another election I want to talk about really quickly, and this is something I brought up last week, which was, you know, people uh, consider Jill Stein to be the leftist savior still out there people voting very excited for jill stein somebody was like people are raising money for kamala harris millions of dollars how about we get on a zoom for jill stein and i was like crickets like please no. go for it get go for it zoom raise for some money for, for yeah do a zoom for jill stein and she'll raise seven million dollars off of your backs like she did in 2016 to overturn an election and then she'll pocket that money because that's what she does anyway yeah. um she Here's my here's the bone that I pick with people about that, because if you are still somebody who is thinking that Jill Stein is a good option, let's say worst case scenario, Harris doesn't really put out a statement that makes us feel great about her stance on what's going on in Gaza. She doesn't put out a policy. We don't like it. And you say to yourself, well, I'm going to vote for Jill Stein instead. That's your right to do that. But here's my thought on that is that. Um, number one, hey, get to know how the fucking government works. And number two, I want you to notice a couple of things. There are people in Congress, right? We've talked about this before, how people are like, oh, Democrats and Republicans are the same. There's like a hundred Democrats who are pro-Palestine or at least pro-ceasefire in Congress. And there are zero Republicans. Okay. So already off the bat, we know not the same. Okay. There's one guy who? who's anti uh, this guy named Thomas Massey. Um, but he's it's just because he is anti-intervention. It's not because okay. he cares. Yeah, okay, he's just right. one of those Republicans. Fuck so, guy, right. And then, um, but they're like, you know, we had uh, uh, con Congressperson Cory, is it Senator or Congressman? Right? Cory Bush? Uh, Congressperson. Congresswoman. Yeah. Congresswoman Cory Bush um, in Missouri, right? Uh, St. Louis. And so she was somebody who got into politics after Ferguson. And she's really successful. And she has been passionately pro-Palestine. She is considered one of the squad that the you know MAGA people really hate. Um, mm -hmm. And she had her primary yesterday. And she lost to an APAC candidate. Um, yeah. I think his last name is Wellesley or Wesley. Um, the guy who ran against her, right? And I think the thing that I noticed was I went through Jill Stein's whatever Instagram and her content or whatever the fuck it is that people are following of hers, right? And like, you've never seen her ever endorse any progressive. All the things that she believes she stands for, the Green New Deal, all that shit. She's never actually endorsed any candidate during an election, during a primary election, during a congressional election, She's never done it for the people that she she swears that she aligns with. And I want you to notice that because like she doesn't actually care about changing the government. All she does every four years is she dusts off her coffers. She collects her monies. She makes people think uh, that she's going to do something. She literally just takes your money. She fucks with the election and then she leaves again. And there's literally nothing coming out of Jill Stein and supporting her because she doesn't actually support any of the people in our government, our Congress members, members of Congress who can actually enact change. So I just wanted to point that out because Cori Bush losing actually broke my heart last night. I was actually sad about it. I was like, fuck. Because Jamal so Bowman also lost a couple months ago. So yeah. that, you know, he was another so, pro-Palestine um, congressperson. So Yeah, so, so two different things there, right? I think number one, 
The Jill Stein conversation is irrelevant. Yeah. Jill Stein is an irrelevant person. If you think that, you know, supporting Jill Stein is a good thing, is a noble thing, whatever the fuck it is, you might as well be um, voting for Barney. Barney, who is pro ceasefire. Like Barney the dinosaur. <laughs> he comes out and he says, I'm pro ceasefire. That is as valid as your support for Jill Stein. Right? I think the the deeper issue here for muslims i think this because you know i've been having conversations with muslims muslims that are like oh i'm gonna vote for jill stein or whatever right and it's it ties back into the other thing that we spoke about last week which is our anger about what has happened in palestine not just over the last year over the last 75 years right is righteous and it's yep. right and it is something that we we it it's it's something that we should be vocal about. The fact that it's still going on is mind boggling that, you know, we're still in the place that we're at. Right. Again, thinking about hope and it feels like such a bullshit privilege thing to say, especially when you know that people are getting murdered and we can sit here and talk about our hope about yeah. how things get better in Palestine. But the the thing about Palestine and Israel that, Muslims have to come to terms with in America is the reason why that relationship is there. The reason why it doesn't feel sometimes it can feel like both the Democrats and the Republicans are the same when it comes to Israel is because there's a 75 year relationship between America and Israel. It is yeah. really, really closely tied. Right. So when we say, Oh, you know what? I, as an act of defiance, I am going to I'm I'm going to show my support for Palestine by throwing my vote away. It's because we need to come to terms with the fact that our we choose to live in this country mm -hmm. and we choose to pay our taxes. And we choose to pay our taxes knowing that we can't always control where that money goes, right? Yeah. And a lot of times that money goes overseas and that's some that's something that we have to deal with ourselves internally. It does. Yeah. It, it never, ever feels good. Right. And then to try to find different, you know, little to try to find little differences between Democrats and Republicans when it comes to Israel. I think that's a valid thing. It's it feels like a small thing, but honestly, it's the small thing that we can do. Mm -hmm. And in this moment, when it comes to helping out Palestinians or in however we want to support them. When it comes to the election, you only have one choice. Yeah. Right. And and that is to vote for the Democrats. Like you don't really have like Jill said, that's not an actual choice. You're not doing anything. And statistically it has shown that third party votes always end up actually benefiting Republicans. So. Of course. It is. So that's how that goes. Okay. Hey, you want to talk about the Olympics? I do. Oh, so much you, to talk about. Uh, there's so much to talk about. Um, <laughs> you got your pen in your mouth. You got, you got lots to say. Um, will you you want to talk about the boxer? Yeah, let's talk about the boxer, Iman uh, Khalif from Morocco. Mm -hmm. Morocco or Algeria? Algeria. Algeria. Um, she beat out some Italian lady named Karini. Uh, mm -hmm. the Italian lady cried about it. And then everybody was like, man, man, man. Mm -hmm. They just started thumping their chests and calling this woman, Iman, a man and started saying that men should not be, um, uh, you know, allowed and da 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 and all this stuff. And then it went back to this thing where a couple of years ago, there was some sort of test that was done because somebody did some sort of ge genetic testing on her or gender testing mm -hmm. on her and it came back that she has xy chromosome some sort of a medical condition now that test has never actually been confirmed by anybody the people who ran that test were russians <laughs> um it was like a russian mm -hmm. body of medicine or something because the person yeah. that she was fighting against was a russian boxer so essentially this like Russian institution conducted a test for which nobody else has ever been ever able to verify that the results have been inconclusive. Like they just said it, but there's never been any backing, but this yeah. happened, right? Despite it. And that's what super right-wing people, transphobes, JK Rowling are using to be like, this was a man be because she has 
uh, or, you know, he has XY chromosomes. And then they're like, all she needs to do is do a, a cheek swab and we can do another test and we can confirm it. And it's like, okay, why don't you drop your pants in front of everybody and show me yeah. that you're a man, right? Because the thing is, Iman was born a woman, has always identified as a woman, is a woman, comes from a country where she would not be able to even be trans, okay? There's, there's, Al Algeria isn't some like, you know, place that you can go to to become, uh, you know, to transition. It's not a LGBTQ friendly country. So mm -hmm. let's say she was a trans woman. Algeria wouldn't ever prop her up as their Olympian. So um, all of those reasons, all of these things, like it logically to anybody with a brain, it makes sense that this would be, you know, the thought process. But when we talk mm -hmm. about the reason why I talk about this is because, you know, the conversation happens about trans people in sports and it always ends up being that like, well, we're doing this because we want to protect women. But what ends up happening every single time in these conversations is that you end up looking at women and questioning them and questioning their identity. It's never the other way around. Like it's nobody's worried that a woman uh, you know, a trans man is going to come into male sports, right? It's always the worries. We're so worried that it's going to be women. But ultimately what ends up showing up is misogyny. And a lot of it comes out to racism because ultimately what they view as masculine features, Serena Williams has had to deal with it. Even Alana Marr, who is a, a rugby player. She's hilarious, by the way. You would love her. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with her? Of course I am. Her social media is so good. Anyway. She's great. Even she's had to deal with it, right? But a lot of black, and she's a white woman, but a lot of black and brown women are often the victims of this kind of questioning because I think there's also a, a track star, a, a runner. Caster, Se Caster Semenya. Yeah. Yeah. She was around she, like 10 years ago. She, yeah. She also had to deal with it, right? And it's always about, well, they don't look the way that women are supposed to look. And even now, Katie Ledecky is getting that. They're like, are you sure? Look at her shoulders. I'm like, have you met swimmers? I don't understand. <laughs> And so they're like, oh, it's an unfair physical advantage. Like, even if this person is a woman, it feels unfair that their masculine um, <laughs> features would put them at a physical advantage. And I'm like, okay, so now you want dainty women to only be yeah. doing sports. Like, you want, bro you don't want, you don't want like these muscular, you want some, you know, some toots. You want a toots to do yeah. some. Hey, do sweetheart. Hey, yeah. can you go do some laps for me, sweetheart. <laughs> That's what you want. And it's absurd. It's so crazy. And you know, it all got. Hold on one second. Yeah. You're gonna put it in the laundry room. Thank you. Can you close the door? Thank you. Just, it's just so official and so mean. Oh my god. <laughs> what? He, he asked him out. Which, uh, no, I just I he asked me what he want where I should do what he should do with his swim stuff. That you treated him like you want to cut off a waiter that has come around one too many times. I'll have the bill, please. Just, just the bill. Thank you. We're done here. <laughs> I usually cut out my kids' interruptions from the pod, but no, I'm gonna I leave saying, it. I was saying, that was, you know, the commenter may not have been off a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> She's a terrible mother. Anyway, um, so. Yeah, it's just annoying. And then, you know, it all got worse because J.K. Rowling opened her stupid yap. Like, ugh. she's the worst. I just hate it. What, there are we you go. Gonna, Full of dread again. Yeah. Go on. Am I going to what? No, what are you, you going to be which, like, well, actually, she has a point. <laughs> here's what I'll say. Let's oh. listen to Joanne. What does she have to Let's say? Let's listen to Joanne. Um, I'll say this. I, first of all, the trans part of this entire conversation, right? It's fucking bullshit. Like, yeah. so, you know, I, the, the issue of trans people in sports is a delicate one. It's a sensitive one. It requires a lot of nuance. I, you know, there, there is something to talk about there, right? Yeah. There is, if, if a male transitions um, to female, there, there are some physical advantages being born male when it comes to athleticism, there just are, right? So that's not to say that I believe one way or the other, it's just the fact that it is a sensitive conversation and it's one that should be happening at some point. Is he coming back in? <laughs> no, I gave a thumbs up to my husband. Oh, okay. Because he pays his uh, way around here. 
anyway yeah. um but i think what this number one the only thing that this revealed to me about the trans uh the trans people in sports conversation is that the people that fucking think that they are qualified to have it are absolutely not qualified to have it right yeah so like jk rowling her her and by the way your girl um you're a big jk fan right? no i'm not a big jk listen i have, have you read the books have you I read have the read, books i've read the books. i, I only read... watch the movies i only watch the movies and i stream them she got no yeah, money but if I me. buy the books once and then I read them, I'm actually no longer giving her any more money. I already did. You're you're streaming. You think those streaming coins don't go to her? I streamed it on Pornhub. She didn't <laughs> money. I only watch. I only Fantastic watch it. Beasts and where to find them on Pornhub, and it gets very confusing because other things come up when I put in Fantastic. <laughs> oh, that's where you find them. <laughs> <laughs> anyway um so like somebody like jk right when you look at her background when she when you think about oh this is like this is like the this is like the sensitive area where she wants this is the reason why because she always says that it's about protecting women right and this is something that i'm slowly learning just by talking to you <laughs> which is i always tend to like give benefit of the doubt more benefit of the doubt to like terrible people than you do <laughs> um and then in jk's in jk's situation right like the one thing i knew about jk was that she gave a lot of money she gave a lot of money to women's shelters she gave a lot of money so in the back sure. of my head i'm like well this is somewhat this maybe this is a good person on some level i disagree with her on this thing but maybe her heart's in the right place or whatever when she's talking about oh no i'm here because i want to protect women like you know that's my big thing yeah and then what this shows is that if you are not careful and if you start going with the wrong crowd when if you just start aligning yourself with hateful people you fall off of the path very very quickly yeah. iman is exactly the person that jk says that she is fighting for yeah. she was born a woman she's always been a woman that's exactly the person that you say you are protecting, right? And you are the reason why that woman has to deal with this bullshit and this racism because you are the biggest part of it. Like, she's the one yeah. that amplified it the most. And yeah. she amplified it with, like, the most racist thing that you could, right? It was yeah. just a picture of Iman looking back, and she said, this is a man smirking. That is yeah. so fucked up, yeah. right? And it's fucked up because Iman doesn't fit JK's vision of what a woman should be and yeah. it's like who the fuck are you like who do who are you to decide right yeah so it's all really really um upsetting what i would hope would happen because the one thing that's very apparent to me because when we're talking about this in our sports group right in our sports group or in our basketball group your husband and i and like two other people are like the are like the liberals in there so yeah. we've been having lots and lots of trans conversations right the things that people always like sarcastically hang their hat on is, well, you know, this trans thing is crazy because it's obviously just like a mental disorder. You know, nature makes you man or woman, right? If you go against that, that's just stupid or whatever. This is this is an example that there is gray in nature. Right? Yes. At the very yes. this is yes. the biggest proof that obviously there's gray in nature. Yep. Right. Iman is a woman. So I'm she's a woman. Right. Yeah. But at the very least, what you should learn from it is, OK, what I what my conception or what my perception of a man is and what my perception of a woman is, is based on my own experiences. It yeah. doesn't mean that it that we should you know, that it applies to everybody. Right. So yeah. I would hope that they would look at this situation and reevaluate it. But they don't. Right. No, like, they the, don't. Like and the, but yeah. the the dudes that I was talking to were like, well, you know what this means is like they should have like an intersex category. It's like, fuck off. No, they shouldn't. Yeah. And right? also she's not intersex. She's a woman to be like yeah. now if this person is physically has a what do they keep calling a biological advantage? Like this tweet keeps coming up, which is Michael Phelps. Michael Phelps has double jointed elbows and knees. 
a hyperextended thorax, 50% less lactic acid production than the mm-hmm. average competitor. That is a biological advantage, okay? Of course, it's called being an athlete. Like, Michael Jordan's the greatest basketball player yeah. because he was quick and he could jump and his body fit perfectly on a basketball court. That's Yeah, and it's better. like saying, like, well, everybody tall can play basketball. And it's like, no, not everybody tall can play basketball, right? Yeah. Like, But, like, there are, there are people who have a certain biological advantage and they're able to do certain and things well and sh- and what, what should we do shame them for not actually going for the thing that is easier for them to do and by the way it wasn't easy for a man she came from poverty like she made her way up here and what's crazy is like she's a female boxer it's never easy There's in no algeria in, <laughs> in algeria <laughs> and like the other thing is that i noticed about transphobes is like so let's say that Iman was now, let's say that they think Iman is, you know, she's a, they're like, no, this is a man. Now, if she tried to box in male boxing, mm-hmm. they'd be like, well, no, she can't yeah. because she's actually a woman. Like if yeah. it was a trans, if it was a trans man, they would never allow. Right. Like, so that's the thing. The logic does. There's no logic. The stream of thinking just kind of falls apart when you ask like two extra questions. It's yeah. so stupid. And I just and hate it. also. And- yeah. The other thing is, like, you can't underplay the racism that yes, is of course. over here, right? It's so apparent that it happens yeah. every single time, right? And it's not just, um, there's this thing that people have. It's like, even when they are, and this is, again, this is all stuff that I'm learning, unfortunately, from talking to you. But, <laughs> you know, like, these people that are like, oh, no, we must protect women. We must protect dainty women. The women need her. At the end of the day, it's just misogyny, right? It's because these are the women that I think need protection and they need my protection because Mm -hmm. I'm the white knight here, right? Yeah. And then the other part is, is if she didn't look the way that she does, right? This would not, if she didn't look the way that she did and the fact that the Italian boxer didn't look like a traditional Caucasian woman who could be, I mean, I don't know, but pretty or whatever, or traditionally attractive or whatever. I think that's another big part of it. They saw a white woman crying and they said, oh, this brown dude beat her up because what they can't accept is the fact that this brown woman is just better. Like yeah. she is exceptional and uh-huh. it's hard for them to accept that. Yeah. And I think, yeah, it's, it's just, it's silly. It's silly, guys. It's ridiculous. Um, yeah. I had a thought, but you know, it escaped me. It's gone. Oh. It, it went away. Um, yeah, I think it's also like, the, you, oh, I know what it was. You were like, you know, it's a lot of these transphobes are like people who are like, I am the person that deserves to save this like little dainty yeah. woman. But also, yeah. I believe that there should be laws in place where if a 12 year old gets raped, she has to carry her baby. So it's like, yeah. who are we? What are we doing here? What are you doing here? You know, I want to protect I want to protect children from predators. And I think that we should be protecting children. But like shame on Tim Waltz for making, you know, free lunches Tampons. for students. You and know, tampons like available. yeah, tampons available to oh, gross bleed on your own time, lady. <laughs> or if you are a lady, I don't even know. Take off your yeah. pants and show me. It's like so stupid. I can't. Ugh. I hate it. Anyway, any other thoughts on the Olympics? There's a lot of thoughts on the Olympics, but I don't think we have the time. We don't. Have I just want to give a shout out because I think it does kind of tie into this. Uh, gymnastics, of course. Yeah. The best. Yep, Simone the best. Biles. Amazing. Incredible. Yeah. Now, do you know about the Simone Biles gymnastics tea? Maybe this is something that could. Is it you. her husband? No. What? Oh. What about her husband? Is, is, oh, oh, husband? oh, yeah, yeah. With uh, was it Michaela something or another? Michaela Skinner. Skinner. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we need we need more time for that because that is such good tea. Essentially, Michaela Skinner, a former uh, uh, gymnast, with her. Yeah talk shit about the uh, U.S. gymnastics team, call them like said that they didn't work hard or that they were lazy yeah, or lazy. something like that. What did she call them? Coded language. Yeah. Lazy. Yeah. Co- yeah coded language, hard. basically racist coded language. Right. Said all this mm-hmm. shit. Uh, and then uh, Simone, when she won, when their team won um, a bunch of stuff this week. But when they won, she posted, she tweeted a picture of them winning. And I think she captioned it with exact caption of 
whatever it is that Mikhail had said about them. Yeah. And, she and said, Mikhail, like, lazy, uninspired something. Yeah, champions. a lazy, uninspired, like, ha- not hardworking champions or something like yeah. that, right? And then Michaela was like, I would really like it if I could apologize to Simone Biles. But Simone Biles was like, you blocked me. She actually went online and was like, you blocked me from Instagram, Michaela. So good. Like, I just love that. I love that Michaela keeps trying to be like, no, I'm trying. And Simone Biles keeps being like, no, you're not. You're stupid and we hate you. <laughs> it's so mean. No, it's, it's the so best. Good. I love it. No, it's, it's so great. good. And then did you see, I think it was the pole vault? Um or the bean something there was a, a be- essentially the guy with the glasses? There- no 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 not that guy that's the pommel horse don't be ridiculous yeah. like cutie with the glasses <laughs> what an angel <laughs> what a time for glasses hey you wear glasses Ooh, yeah. um no there was i think it was yesterday it was simone biles um you know what? i'm gonna look this up because i don't want to fuck it up Suni lee yeah they both uh, was- fell. huh is that the one where they both fell hold on uh no, it wasn't Suni Lee. It was. Is this uh, a Marlon Humphrey story? No, you're just saying words, and I don't know what you're talking about. It's not that. Was it? Was it after they lost and they were bowing down to like the Brazil lady? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. It's Jordan Childs. Yeah. It was Simone yeah. Biles, Jordan Childs, and um a Brazilian gymnast whose name I don't know, but she won gold, and mm-hmm. these guys won silver and bronze. And it was really cool because they kept bowing down to her and they kept like giving her her props. And they were also like, this is the first time in gymnastics we've have we've had three black women in mm-hmm. the top three for this. So it was really cool. It was like U.S. gymnastics makes me really happy. I can't. The gymnast, like, I think when I think about the Summer Olympics, I always think about what goes first or Number one is gymnastics. Gymnastics this year also with my girl Lori Hernandez. She's in the one of the announcers. She's an yeah. ex gymnast. Yeah. Um, she's from Old Bridge, Old Bridge, oh, New Jersey. A and, Jersey girl, of course. And she, of course. she's so funny during the during her commentary, and she's so adorable, and she's so lovable. I just love them all so much. Oh, the best. Anyway, remember the Magnificent Seven? Of course I do. I think I can probably named like four or five of them off the top of my head. When uh, okay, Dominique Musciano. Yes, the easy. Carrie one. Strug, obviously. Yeah. Uh, oh, I can see their faces right in front of me. Shannon Miller. Shannon Miller, curly hair, of course. Yeah. Um, uh, Dominique Dawes. Dominique Dawes, yeah. Um, I believe the Asian one was <laughs> the Asian one. Uh, Amy Chow. Are you looking them up? Uh, yeah, I am. Hold on. Uh, I'm gonna say Amy Chow. Okay. Um. I don't yeah, know it was. J.C. Phelps. J.C. Phelps. Yeah. Was that so, all of them? You know, I pro- we probably don't have the time to get into this, right? But just <laughs> tying back to like that racism and misogyny when it comes to women's sports, right? And like actually celebrating excellence versus people just celebrating women that they find attractive or whatever which i think there's a place for that also i think that the fact that wnba players are getting shine now i mean i'm talking to somebody that's horny for kizare yeah um, which so is the only I... reason why you're looking at it right i i understand that and there's a place for it or whatever right but like when you consider the fact that the biggest gymnast in the world right now the most famous gymnast in the world right now is simone biles oh, and she amazing. is the biggest gymnast because She's the greatest gymnast of all time, right? Yeah. Number two gymnast in the world probably is Libby Dunn, right? Yeah. And Libby Dunn is a famous TikToker from the LSU team. Yeah. And yeah, she's yeah. only famous For because of how she looks. Yeah. Right. And so that is the that is the stuff that female athletes have to contend with all the time yeah it's like you're not just good at sports but you also need to be very fuckable and that's disgusting you you have to fit my idea of what i find attractive or otherwise it's not yeah we're not celebrating you yeah Ugh. terrible anyway um but i like i like watching it and you know if you go on peacock you can go to this thing where peacock has the highlights of every single thing so included in there are like the you know the turkish um shooter what a guy yusuf um (laughs) yusuf has killed some people yeah he definitely has (laughs) where was he during the khashoggi murder 
I'm not Where sure. Is, whereabouts? Um, but you know, it's it's very good. Um, anyway, that's it. We're I'm gonna also drop an episode with you and our friend Kendrick. What? You have one more Could, thing? What is it? Just one up. I have a whole like I have four pages of Olympic stuff. <laughs> no, we right, can get to I it next week. About. Yeah, yeah, we can get to it. I just want to give you one thing. Um, because it's a follow up to something else that we talked about. Remember, we were talking about the poop in the sand. Yes, they had to delay it a, a day because there was so much bacteria they couldn't yeah, do the I'm triathlon. So <laughs> Feces oh. don't let you in. Listen. Yes, can I just do one more thing? Sorry, this yeah, be quick. Yeah, you know who's doing the closing ceremonies? Who? TC. Oh, wait, let me guess. Uh, I already I mean, said I it. it. No, I didn't hear you. Oh, you didn't hear me? Hey, go ahead. Okay. Is it Is it a group? No. It's a very important person to me. Is it Beyonce? Maybe your husband. Oh, it's Bruce. No. No? Celine? No. All right, just give me. Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise is doing a he's doing a stunt for the closing ceremony. <laughs> I'm so it's stupid. Gonna be amazing. That's the so dumbest excited. thing I've ever heard in my life. Ah, uh, anyway, what a time to be alive. Uh, we're going to be doing an episode later for the Patreon to talk about the House of the Dragon finale. Ooh, exclusive. Exclusive for the Patreon. Um, You can head over there. You know, you can do a free trial. You could do a free trial. You could binge all the episodes that I have in there and just be like, I'm done. And then you could cancel your subscription if you want. But don't do that. Give me money. 